Do you ever feel overwhelmed? Not by anything in particular, but just life. The journey of life can be daunting between working to pay the bills, growing your relationships to keep your family afloat. And then where does that leave time for yourself and your personal health? Welcome to the I Killed My Own Killer book series and podcast, where we are all about juggling and managing all of your responsibilities to be by your side in growing through it all. This brand is here to help you achieve your goals, whether they are personal and emotional goals you set for yourself, business goals you want to hit in your career, or physical and nutritional goals you want to accomplish to be a healthier version of yourself. Whatever your goals are, stay tuned for tips and tricks to make accomplishing them easier for you. Each episode will help you significantly improve in one aspect of your life or another. It's me, Caitlin, with the I Kill My Own Killer book series and podcast, and I am so excited because we are kickstarting season two off in February, but you get a sneak peek today of season two, the I Killed My Own Killer book series and podcast that's all about personal development. And I'm stoked because I have yours truly, <laughs> Melissa, who is a killer mom, businesswoman, God-fearing entrepreneur, and she's always motivated. So I'm super excited to have a chit chat with her, but I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to do this with you and to start 2021 with you by my side. Yes. Um, so as she said, I am a business owner. I'm a real estate agent at District South Real Estate Company. I've been in this industry for 11 years as a realtor, and I was a real estate paralegal for 12 years prior to that. Wow. So this is what I've done for the last 23 years of my life was real estate. Um, I'm a mom of a beautiful nine-year-old little girl, and I guess that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome introduction. Yes, she said it perfectly. Um, and let me know, we have a few people watching right now. Is the camera blurry? Do you see it blurry? It is. Okay, so let me see if I can fix that. And if you are listening to this podcast over iTunes, Apple, or even YouTube, you don't have that issue. But um, if you're watching right now, let me know if it's, if it's blurry. And if so, I will try to fix it. But the good information is going to come from what we're saying. So as long as you can hear us, y'all are good to go. Um, so to kickstart 2021 off, I want to know, Melissa, how did you end 2020? So 2020, um, I had set a goal. And if we want to talk specifics, is that what you mm -hmm. would like? Okay. So my goal was to do $10 million in 2020 in sales and i finished that year at 10.6 million so i was super excited about that i was worried with the pandemic going on that that was not going to be possible but i think because of low interest rates yeah. real estate ended up being a really good year for for most you know realtors and mortgage lenders and home buyers and sellers to be honest yeah so it worked out and you're mm -hmm. benefit for sure it did it did awesome so you exceeded your goal for 2020 and whenever you did your evaluations for that year mm -hmm. how did you set up your new goals for 2021 so as you grow kind of the the chunk the gap can't be as huge mm -hmm. or at least for me especially being a single mom that makes sense so i set my goals for 2021 okay. off of my past sales i analyzed everything how many buyers how many sellers what's the average household um, i was fortunate to have a multi-million dollar transaction so i backed that out because gotcha. we're not guaranteed that every year right yeah. so i backed that out and looked at realistic numbers and set my goals for this coming year at 12 million okay um and i break it down to how many per month how many buyers how many sellers what's the price point um, so it's just a number game. It's understanding the numbers to make it work for you throughout the year. Awesome. So that's how you set your goals and you didn't, like you said, take too big of a chunk. You were realistic with it. I was realistic for the lifestyle that I choose. Okay. I don't want to work 24 seven. Yeah. I'm always available to my clients, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I do a lot with my church. I do a lot with my daughter, my boyfriend and his kids. Like, you know, I want to have personal life as well. I don't want to punch a clock 24 seven. That makes sense. And every time I talk to Melissa, she's very adamant about sticking to her schedule. And whenever she's home, she's mama bear. And whenever she's working, she's hustling. So I think that's a really key component too, whenever you're setting your goals, is to set your goals for your lifestyle and what's going to fit for you. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. We all like to look at other people online and different social media influencers, or I love to read different books by different authors, but different strokes for different folks. And we all got to figure out what's our rhythm and how can we do things. Right. And I think when I was newer in the industry, I would, I would do that comparison and yeah. I would wonder, you know, why can't I do that? Why mm -hmm. can't I do that? And I finally had to stop all the nonsense and be very honest with myself about what's important. And now that I've done that and it, and with 2020 and the pandemic forcing us to slow down, I've really been able to prior to prioritize what I want for me. Yeah. And now it's non-negotiable. That's good. 2020 had us all sit back and reflect and do a lot of uh, thinking on mm -hmm. ourselves, how we want to raise our families, how we want to have our careers going. So I'm glad that you're taking what you learned in 2020 and carrying it over into 2021 yes. to have a successful year yes. for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Um, so. Whenever it comes to managing it all, you're mm -hmm. very active in your business, you are an amazing mother, and you take into consideration your physical health, your diet, mm -hmm. your um, physical activity. How do you balance all of those goals? So I think it's just mindset, honestly. Yeah. Um, of course, I've read some books that helped with that mm -hmm. and, and that you, know, you get these little tools here and there. But one of the things that I'm big on is every single month, which if you look at my calendar, it's like, how am I going to grow mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially? And that doesn't mean I do every area every month, mm -hmm. but if you, right now, I have the first six months scheduled okay. of how am I going to grow these six months in these categories? What does that look like? What does that look like with COVID still around? And we can't go to any sort of, you know, grand conference or anything like that. And so as I break it down, I'm able to have a plan for it. I know I'm going to get to it. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of evaluate on a very regular basis. I can't say every day, but often it's like, we know when we're mm -hmm. dropping the ball on something, we can feel it. Yeah. And I think I've learned when I'm feeling that, when I know, hey, I was not the best mom I could be today. And I don't mean a perfect mom, mm -hmm. but I didn't give it my all. All we can do is do better the next day. That's good. Same with our business, same with our physical health. Like, I really want the dessert. I'll eat it. I'm <laughs> yeah. just not going to do it for seven days in a row. You know, oh, so that's like, good. it's everything. It's it's in moderation. It's being aware and being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so easy to say, oh, I worked out every day this week and you worked out twice. Yeah. Well, that's not serving anyone any good. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn to hold myself accountable and just be real. Wow. That's awesome. So what I'm picking up from you is you have to realize that you're not perfect, but at the same yes. time, you're still trying to be the best version of yourself that right. you can be. Right. And I think putting those systems, like the calendar, like mm -hmm. constantly asking myself, how did I grow today? Or what am I looking for this week? What's the goal for the week? What's the goal for the day? And I am a list person. Yeah. So I love, I'll put them in my phone, but I want pen and paper because mm -hmm. I want to check it off as I go. I get so much satisfaction. <laughs> even if it's cleaning the house, mm -hmm. I get satisfaction. Me too. I'll so, every single task on my <laughs> list that I need to do and then scratch it all off. Right, right. So that's really just how I, I hold myself accountable, I think was the original question yeah. was, was those little tools and the mindset. Mm -hmm. You and have to start there. Okay. And is there one key component that you may, that really hits home for you where you know, okay, I'm slapping. Like, what is it for you um, whenever maybe it's in your physical health or your business and you realize I'm not doing my best, I need to kick back up. What is that red flag for you? So I guess for my business, it's if my phone is quiet. Oh, that's good. If it's good. not giving me a lot of you know, dings and rings and all of that, then it's like, okay, where's the clients at? Yeah. Where's my people? Uh -huh. And then health, I mean, we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're feeling like crap or you can't get out of bed. Are you physically feel your body aching? Yeah. Or you go to put on those favorite jeans and mm -hmm. you're not going to wear them that day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's obvious. And if I have to be fair, I do love to work out, but that's always the first thing I stop doing mm. whenever I put too much energy into other stuff. Like wow. I will drop the workout. I still take care of the eating part, mm -hmm. but I will drop the workout in a heartbeat mm -hmm. if I'm too busy, too busy yeah. with other things. I'm and so, then I regret it. Yeah. You know? And then you get back up and you do it right. again. But I'm so happy you said that because me and um, a, an entrepreneur friend recently had this conversation and it happens. Your business gets busy, your family gets really busy, and then you realize, holy crap, I haven't gone to the gym in two weeks or yeah. I haven't moved my body 
in weeks and then you have to pick the ball up again mm -hmm. and those two things they affect each other you stop yeah. working out then your business can start slacking because you feel like crap or if your business is going bad maybe it's because your health has not been in order right so very true yeah very true. and if you listen to any successful like mega successful person they talk about health they talk about mental and physical health mm -hmm. all the time many will talk about spiritual health as well yes how important that is and they start their day with that mm -hmm. like they wake up super early to do what they need for themselves so then that they could go out and kill it yes and so i try to do that as much as possible mm -hmm. and most of the time i'm good sometimes <laughs> i fail <laughs> and it's okay because we are all human but yes they definitely go hand in hand last night we were watching the show um undercover billionaire and like we were mm -hmm. talking about grant cardone he had to go into a completely new city with uh, no car what well, was a car but it was a broke down car a new cell phone a new identity and only a hundred dollars mm -hmm. and build a million dollar company in 90 days and he did it but he went to the gym on day one when he was broke and had no food and had no shelter so i'm like how can he go to the gym when he has all these other problems but he realizes that his health if that's mm -hmm. not in order no Nothing else is going to work right. out completely like what you just said. Right. For sure. Yes. I mean, we have to feed ourselves whatever that looks like mm -hmm. first. Absolutely. So whenever you're looking at your goals, you said that you look at your calendar um, every few days. So that's basically at least once a week, correct? So the calendar stays in front of me. So uh -huh. like right now, January through, I guess, maybe June, mm -hmm. I've already calendared how am I going to grow mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. Okay. Um, some of those are non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I can't control yeah. all the financial side of things, but I can put the work in to grow the business, mm -hmm. right? And so that's all calendared, but then it's taking a, a weekly assessment of it as well. As far as the every few days, that's kind of like, how have I been as a mom? How have okay. I been as a girlfriend? How have I been with myself? Like, Because if we don't, next thing we know, two or three weeks have gone by, and that's when just damage can mm -hmm. creep in. and. So I've learned over the years to just, in order to avoid the spiraling effect of falling down the hole, the yeah. rabbit hole, just to evaluate and say, all right, that's so good. How was I these last couple of days? Or how was yeah. I today? We know in our gut, mm -hmm. we know when we're failing at something. And that's not always a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? That's part of life. It is. But then you have an opportunity to correct it. Mm -hmm. If you don't evaluate yourself, you just don't know. You're right. And I love how you said that you write these things down in your mm -hmm. calendar. That way, whenever you sit down and you do your evaluations, it's right there in front of you. Because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, some of us at the end of the day, we're like, oh, okay, how was I as a mom? How was I as a business owner? And we can think these things to ourselves, but mm -hmm. whenever you see it on paper, it really makes it real for you. Absolutely. And I love how you broke it down on a macro level. The big things, that's what you look for from here to June. You set those uh, big goals for yourself, mm -hmm. but daily and weekly, you're looking at those smaller things that's gonna compound later to those bigger goals. Right, absolutely. And look, that calendar looks very different than maybe what you would do. And mm -hmm. I told you this a few days ago, we were talking. One of them is a yoga retreat with my best girlfriend. We're just gonna mm -hmm. get away and breathe because I need that for myself, for yes. clarity, for breathing. She needs it in her life. And you know, it's a goal. It's something that we're gonna make happen. and. Whether she comes or not, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And when is that retreat? We haven't picked a date, but February is when we're shooting for it. Awesome. So we're trying to agree on places. <laughs> cool deal. Yeah, I'm like, it's cold right here. I don't know if you would do yoga outside. Of not the outside. <laughs> no. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, self-care is key. Do you schedule that in your calendar? I do. Yeah? I do. If I don't, I won't do it. I'll oh. clean the house. I'll mop the floor. I'll play with my daughter. Like, mm -hmm. if I don't schedule what I want for myself, I won't do it. So whether it's working out or a massage or taking time to meditate, like yeah. that's super important to me to have that time with God, to pray and to just be silent. And when I'm busy with work, I sometimes slack on it. Mm -hmm. And so I have to say no, no, even if you have to wake up early or when you go take a shower. Yeah. A couple, maybe a couple weeks ago, I caught myself literally just sitting on the bathroom floor meditating because it was the only space I could find and the only time I could find, and I knew I needed it. I yeah. needed that connection with God. Yes. So I took it. Yes, and that's the thing. If you just listen to your body, it'll tell you what to do, whether that's connecting with God or picking back up and eating better food right. or even with business. You know when you're being lazy and whenever you can do more. <laughs> so listening to your body is key. Um, and like you said earlier, we fail sometimes. We don't hit our goals. Um, what do you do whenever you don't necessarily hit your goals? Do you beat yourself up about it? Do you set a bigger goal? How do you handle that? 
surpassed me would absolutely beat myself up. Yeah. There would be depression, there would be frustration, and I'm talking a few years back. Mm-hmm. There was just, I would spiral down. And it's not like a, it was just mental. You mm-hmm. know, just the things I would say to myself, the, the negative words, the negative talk that I had gotten into a pattern of doing. I don't speak to myself that way anymore. Good. So therefore, even when I... It's rare that I don't reach a goal mm-hmm. because I'm determined. Yeah. I don't care what I have to do. I'm determined to reach that goal. So it's very rare mm-hmm. that I don't reach a goal. But when I don't, instead of doing the beating myself up, I just ask, well, what can you do? Mm-hmm. What can you do next? Yeah. Okay, you didn't reach it by this deadline, but what can you do to get there? And what's the new deadline look like? So it, it really, I think, all starts again with that mindset mm-hmm. of... What type of life do you want to live? Yeah. And I don't, I'm not a negative person. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I was doing that to myself a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But, and as a Christian, I think God probably, I know God helped remove that. Yeah. So I just don't do it anymore. Now when I don't reach a goal, it's okay. Why didn't I, do I still want that goal? Mm -hmm. Right? Because maybe something's changed. And how can I achieve it if I haven't reached it by whatever timeline? Because even if, you know, this year at one point I thought, there's no way I'm making 10 million. Yeah. There's no way. Not with everything going on, there's mm-hmm. no way. And when I looked at the numbers and I saw the gap, mm-hmm. I was like, this is impossible. Wow. There's no way I'm going to get what I want out of this year. And I believed that with my entire heart. Mm-hmm. But it was like, hold up. What if? Mm-hmm. What if I dream big? Yes. And that's when I sold the condominium complex for three point four five million. Oh my goodness! And so it was just kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. Uh huh. It took everything for all the agents to make it work, yes. but it worked. <laughs> Buyer and seller are happy. Oh my goodness! So it's a win win for everyone. But there was a time where it was like this. This is impossible. Mm-hmm. And I stopped. I brought God into it. I did the physical work myself. Yeah. I made the phone calls and... And he brought the rest. He brought the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a huge testimony right there. And she said some amazing stuff. And that one question that I asked her, and so much of that was just for me. One mm-hmm. big thing that she said was she reevaluates her goals. And if they changed, okay, she moves on. Where I used to be a stickler where if I set mm-hmm. a goal for myself, I have to hit it. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing life changes, things happen. So for me, January started, my grandma died on the 2nd. I've been busy because Lincoln's birthday is the 4th and we have a party tomorrow. I have yet to get a planner. Usually I'm planning like December of last year, but that's okay. I'm going to pick myself up today, get my planner, get everything done and keep it moving. Right. And then your testimony was huge too because... I'm not a negative person either, but when it comes to possibilities, I like to be realistic. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So whenever my husband and I were thinking about where we're going to move to next, he's looking at $400,000 homes, and I'm like, hold up, homeboy. we got to be real. We've got to look at where we're at now, where he's a dreamer, he's a visionary, so he continued to look at those homes, and then God made a way for it to all work out. So we can sometimes limit ourselves to what God wants to bring to us. But we got to start speaking life just like you do over your goals. Absolutely. And I think it's such a beautiful thing to stay in that balance. Like, you don't want to limit yourself. Mm-hmm. You do want to dream. And then you have to be real. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you stop reaching for those dreams, mm-hmm. right? You can say, okay, this is our last house. We're never going to buy another house. This is it. Mm-hmm. But your husband's like, no, we're going to get bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. And those are good things. And mm-hmm. I think that's what makes helps a balanced relationship, a balanced marriage, but we can even do that within ourselves. We can. And I think that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to limit ourselves. He wants mm-hmm. us to cap ourselves out mentally when we're dreaming financially. But if we continue to think big, God's going to continue to deliver on those promises because he right. said that he'll give us the desires of our hearts. So we just got to continue to desire. You don't know how often I say that to myself. Yeah. Like on a regular basis. I, I know what God promised me, and I want those promises. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to do my part, right? Yes. But I, I know, like he's sitting next to me right now, what he has promised me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to keep going after them. You got me with goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so true, and this brand is all about personal development in all areas of life. So if you are a single woman or man listening mm-hmm. to this, then that's for you too. God's going to give you that desire in your heart to have an amazing husband and wife, but that doesn't mean you continue to be the person you are today. You grow and become that hu- that ideal husband and wife that you want to be. Mm-hmm. That way when God lines you up with that person, you are ready to go. 
So you can take all of this advice and knowledge and apply it in your relationships, in your physical health, financial health, and then spiritual health because you hear us dropping these God bombs. <laughs> right. Very true. That is so true. And, you know, I used to even say that, like, or church teaches, like, you become the one mm -hmm. so that when you find the one, you're ready. That's good. And I think it's just genius. And so when I am talking to singles or whatever, it doesn't matter the age and at this, you know, time frame of life. It's just... They want, they want, they want, they want, but what are they prepared to give? And as we all know, givers gain, right? Mm -hmm. And so what are they prepared to give their partner? Why would someone pick them? Yeah. Whether it's a business partner or a romantic partner, like why would someone pick them? Mm. And I think if they, if we could all just give before we ask for anything in return, yes, we would see life differently. Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. huge. One thing I've been praying for and really just working on myself is to find other like-minded, motivated moms that mm -hmm. um, just want to be my friend. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> like I'm in pre-K all over again, but <laughs> God proved me in 2019 to let go of a lot of the previous relationships I had, mm -hmm. but it's to meet better ones. But I can't bring old Kate onto these new relationships or it's yeah. not going to match. So yeah. I'm working on that. That's true. That is so true. And I'm, I've caught myself doing the same thing. And so... We want to level up in business, right? We want to level up in finances. But if we don't level up in our personal friendships, mm -hmm. if we keep doing the same things that we did when we were 20, well, where's the evidence that you're leveling up your life? Yes. It's not a knock towards anybody from your past. Mm -hmm. You're just in a different road right now. That's and that's it. okay. And mm -hmm. they can come or not, but you can't stay and not go after your dream because someone's holding on to you tightly. Mm -hmm. You have to say, I love you. I'm going to be over here and you can come anytime you want. You yeah, can join me. Welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at it as like an anchor. They're holding you back and sometimes you don't even realize it. But whenever you're ready to fly, you will feel that pressure and you will immediately let go. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to aim in that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, to wrap it up, what is um, the biggest tip that you would give somebody who's ready to take that next step and start leveling up? in 2021 they want to mm -hmm. have a better career life they want to have better relationships mm -hmm. and they want to have a better physical health what is the biggest tip that you would give them honestly find a mentor yeah and that could look different for everyone so maybe you can do it on your own with podcasts and books mm -hmm. and motivational messages but if not find a friend yeah you know you don't necessarily have to pay for a mentor if it's business Find someone who's doing better than you and ask them to mentor you. Worst case, they say no. Then you ask the next and the next and the next. Find someone like Caitlin where even if they don't hire you mm -hmm. to coach or mentor them, they can watch so much of your stuff for free. They can learn so much. Like, Look for that person that motivates you, that gives you tools, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to ask for help. Most of the time, those who are on the higher ladder, they will gladly help you rise to the top with them. Yes. If they say no. Just move on to the next. Mm -hmm. You are so right about that. Having a circle of influence who's better than you is huge because yes. then you're always going to start reaching for more. Yes. So I love that you said make sure you have a mentor. And even if you can't pay for them, just have a really good friend who's going to be that for you. Right. Absolutely. I like to say the difference is a friend is going to tell you what you want to hear and a mentor is going to tell you what you need to hear. So make sure that mentor yes. or friend of yours is telling you what you need to hear, which is definitely what we do on the I Killed My Own Killer book series and podcast. Um, it's, all about, it's all a part of a four-part book series that I wrote and one's on physical health. The next one is actually on social media, um, see social media detoxing. And then the third one is on the power of prayer. And the fourth one is on entrepreneurship. So make sure you check out the first book that's out already. And we have a free Facebook group too, where I'm constantly in there posting daily motivation too. Right. So I could be your social media friend that's there to pick you up and hit your 2021 goals, even though I'm not physically there with you. Absolutely. That's great. Yes. <laughs> well, I had an awesome time just chit-chatting with you, Melissa. Thank you so much for just Thank feeding you. my soul and giving our listeners and viewers so much feedback and just kickstarting their 2021. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm ready to go get my planner today, but y'all have a killer day. Um, stay in touch and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or Apple iTunes. Wow. How about that episode? I know you are motivated to kick your butt into gear and become a better version of yourself from this experience of the I Killed My Own Killer book series and podcast. The crazy title of this podcast comes from the original personal development book series. Each book will transform you even more than listening to this podcast. Each book takes a deeper dive into how you can better yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and even spiritually. 
Continue your journey of personal growth by being a part of the amazing personal growth book series that is written in a fun, fiction way with in-depth journals concluding each chapter. What are you waiting for? Go order your book at www.kfoxworth.com and join the Facebook community in the private Facebook group named I Killed My Own Killer Book Series and Podcast. You don't want to miss out on the full trifecta experience, including the books, the podcast, and the mastermind community in Facebook groups. Keep your personal growth burning desire on fire and be part of it all. It all starts here. So thanks for listening to the podcast and stick around for more great episodes to keep you growing in all areas of life. You are killing it.